What's up? Welcome back to How to Play Dark Souls. Today we're going to do a, a couple of things. First of all, we are going to kill uh, Havel the Rock. If you don't remember how to get there uh, to where that guy is, I'm going to show you right now, even though I'm fast forwarding. But remember this door? This is a door I talked about probably in like episode two, maybe three. I said we'll come back to here to get a ring that's going to be really helpful for a dexterity build. Well, this is what we're coming back for now. There's a guy at the bottom of these stairs who is uh, fairly powerful, but in my opinion, actually pretty easy to kill um, because of how slow he is. So if you're going for a dex build and make sure that you're at uh, underneath 25% of your max equip uh, equipment load, you should be able to get around this guy really easily. He does hit really hard, but as long as you're underneath 25% of your max equip load, if you need to equip a different shield, you know, you could do that. But if if you get below that, he's super easy to get around. He'll do this big hit like this. You can just sneak right behind him and get backstabs. And it doesn't even really matter how weak your weapon is, like, because you can just keep doing this over and over again. And it's so easy. But um, if you have gone to Andre Vistora and you've leveled up uh, your weapon, and uh, if you've been upgrading your endurance, like I've been telling you, um, it should really be pretty much a piece of cake to get around this guy and stab him in the back. One thing to mention as well, and this is a, a trick that I taught you back in episode 2, but just make sure that your stamina stays high, and to do that, keep your shield down unless you have to use it. Make sure that you, you keep your stamina up. See, when he hits you like that, back up and put your shield down so that your, your stamina will, will go back up really fast so that you can get back into trying to get around him and you can keep your shield up. But other than that, I mean, this is actually a pretty easy fight. It's, it's not tough. And you could actually beat him at a pretty early level as long as you just get backstabs in, a lot of backstabs. But this is what we came for, is Havel's Ring. So let's go ahead and equip that. Now, before I do that, though, I do want to point something out. Um, I used the souls that the online player gave me um, in a couple episodes ago to level up my endurance all the way to level 40. There was a reason I wanted to do that, was to tell you guys, don't level up anything past 40 once you get it there. Once you get endurance to 40, just keep it there, and this is why. You see... Every time you level up in Dark Souls, like for instance, if you're looking at this graph, going from if you, when you level up to level two, it costs 673 souls. To level three, it costs 690 souls. To level four, 707 souls. So every time you level up, the amount of souls required for the next level uh, goes up incrementally, all the way to the point where at level 50, you got to spend 14,535 souls. Well, the reason I'm telling you this is because after level 40 on any one of these attributes, the gains that you get from leveling up are very minimal, meaning that you're not gaining much. Uh, like, it, for instance, if you're upgrading strength past level 40, you're not getting very much in return for the souls that you're spending. The, the, the gains go down significantly after level 40. So it's not a good idea to continue spending all of these souls in strength when you're not really getting much back and it's only becoming more expensive all the time. What you need to do instead is get other attributes that are important to your build up to level 40 so that it won't cost so many souls later on in the game to do that after you've been leveling up this you know, this other attribute to level 50 or 60 or whatever, and you're not getting much in return for that. Does that make sense? Anyways, let's uh, let's equip this ring and see what it does. So we got Havel's ring here. Um, I do want to show you exactly what this is going to do. So if you look at my equip load here, you see that my maximum equip load is 80. Right now I have 18. That's either pounds or... I don't know, maybe kilograms or something. But um, I can equip up to 80 uh, kilograms or, or pounds or whatever you want to call it um, before I'll become completely over-encumbered. But with the Havel's Ring, when I put this on, 
watch what it's going to do to my max equip load. It goes up to 120 now. Now remember, for the build that I'm going for, I'm trying to stay underneath 25% of that max equip load. So the higher the max equip load, um, the more I can equip as far as uh, heavy armors and stuff like that. And I'll still be able to move really, really fast. So Havel's Ring is really important to the build that I'm going for. Now before you leave this area, make sure you open this door. This is a shortcut to Dark Room Basin. Dark Root Basin. Sorry, I'm kind of mumbling there. Um, and uh, we're not going to go there now, but it may be something, you know, you want to keep in mind in the future if you need a shortcut. Now, we are going to go and fight the next boss. And I'm going to show you how to get there. So, I'm going to fast forward through all of these undead, because you've probably seen me fight them four or five times by now. So I don't need to show that off again. You get to the top of these stairs, of course, to the left there's this rat. This guy will often drop humanity, so I like to kill him and try and collect that when I can. By the way, the more uh, humanity you have um, that you've used, the, the better your chances are of uh, getting rare drops. But that gate, you may have noticed, uh, we can't go through there yet. So, it says it doesn't open from this side. You may have also noticed another gate that is similar, it won't open from side right. You'll remember this uh, bonfire here. But right into this room, there's also a gate that we can't open from this side. So you're probably wondering, well, how do, how do I freaking open these doors? I will show you. Next to the bonfire, go up the ladder, up towards the, uh, the bridge where the drake is stationed at. I don't think he's here right now because he flew away last time I was here, but he will probably come back, so just run as fast as you can. There he is. He's going to blow fire, and he's going to hit us, but no big deal. Let's just continue all the way to this side of the bridge and then take a left. There's a door right here we can open with the basement key. Uh, if you don't remember or haven't been watching uh, the videos so far, the basement key can be found. I believe it's in video four. If you go back to my How to Play Dark Souls number four, you go 23 minutes in exactly. That is where you can find the basement key. So uh, head back there if you don't know or if you don't have the basement key at this moment. But we're going to uh, unlock this door first, which will give us another good shortcut back to the bonfire. And you'll see this is the room we were just in. Kill these guys real quick. Just so you can see the room. And there's a bonfire back that way. So we've uh, come full circle. Now let's head back down this way again to the lower undead burg couple of things we want to do in this area before fighting the boss. First of all, you need to be aware that there are these dogs that are kind of, or wolves or whatever they are, they're going to come after you and they can poison you pretty quick and they're actually pretty fast. So you gotta, you gotta be a little bit careful. Try and lure them out one at a time if possible. Um, but uh, if they if they get any hits on on the body, they're gonna poison you pretty quickly. Poison's not something to be terribly worried about. It's not nearly as bad as the toxic status, but um, still not something you want to deal with if you can avoid it. Let's first go back this direction because there's uh, an item we can pick up back here. There's gonna be a lot of undead, so try and lure them out one at a time. They've uh, got these torches they'll hit you with that do a fair amount of damage, especially if all of them are attacking you at once, as usual with these enemies. So just take it easy. Um, try and get them one at a time if you can. And that uh, that item over there on the dead body, that's what we're, uh, that's what we're here to get. There we go. So, this is a Twin Humanities, and as the name alludes to, it's a, it's an item where if you use it, you get two humanity. So, keep that on you for later. Now we need to open, it's not this door, it's this door right here. Somebody, please let me out of here. And uh, there's a new Anybody NPC here, this is Griggs of Vinheim. Sorry, in the last video I actually got one of the uh, 
one of the names of the NPCs wrong. And it was just because I was tired and I wasn't thinking quickly. His name's Oswald of Kareem. I called him Kareem. But um, anyways, I'll try and be a little more, th more thorough and get the names of these characters right in the future. But this is Griggs. Um, you might remember Rickert from the last video. He was in New Londo. He kind of trapped himself in a cage and he could sell you magic and stuff. Well, this is Griggs. He comes from the same place. And if you free him, he goes back to Firelink Shrine and he sells you even better stuff. So make sure you free him, if, especially if you want to be like a like a magic build. He can sell you some really good magic and accessories. So watch out here. All of these doors you see, there's uh, an ambush waiting for us. You just go forward a certain distance and then boom, they come out. You don't want to get surrounded. These are really quick enemies. They also have a, uh, a counter move, kind of like the, uh, oh, what are they called? I think they're called the Balders. Those guys with the, the thin blades that would kind of hold it up, and if you attack them, they, see, that that's what he's doing here. When he holds his knife up like this, it means he's ready to counter you, and that's what it looks like when he counters you. It's bullcrap. Luckily, it didn't do that much damage, but... These guys aren't particularly hard, they're just really fast, and uh, they do have that one really annoying counter move, so you got to watch out for that. But uh, backstabs would be an excellent way to get rid of them. Okay, so that takes care of those guys. I think there's an item in here. And mail breaker, not something I'm interested in, but whatever, it's there for if you want it. I don't think there's anything in these other rooms. Nope. Okay, we'll head down this way, and there's going to be some more guys waiting for us down here, so be on your guard. They will come out eventually. There they are. Same deal, just uh, approach them carefully. These guys can also poison you, so watch out for that too. Everything down here seems to want to poison us. Okay, once you've taken care of those guys, there's a couple more dogs we gotta fight. So watch out for that as well. If you've leveled up your sword to plus five, you should be able to take them out in one hit. Okay. So in one of these rooms, there's an armor set that I'm going to use. Mostly because I'm tired of wearing these pyromancer's robes. Oh, by the way, break this off. We'll break this guy out of this barrel and grab soul item. And then it's in here. So this is the thief set. The thief set is one of the starter sets. You could be a th the thief class and it would come with that. But um, it's it's a tiny bit better only on the physical defense side of things. So I'm going to wear it for now, because the next boss, fortunately, uh, doesn't really have any magic. So um, we need all the physical defense we can get, and this is only a very small boost in physical defense. But um, I'm just going to wear it because I've been wearing this tattered uh, Pyromancer stuff the whole game and kind of want to mix it up a little bit. Shortly in the future, we're going to be getting a really nice set of armor, so... Um, I'm just going to wear this for now. Even though it's only going to give me a little bit of a boost against the next boss. Now this fog wall here, remember where this is at because we're going to be coming back there. That's where the boss is, but we're going to open a shortcut first and then come back. Okay, be careful because right here on the left, they'll be waiting in ambush for you. So, also watch out, because these guys can throw, um, he's going to try and heal, get him first, but they can throw daggers at you, so you got to watch out for that. And one or two hits should do it. There we go. Now, let's go all the way to the end here first and pick up this item. It's another soul item. And then to the left, you might notice this door. 
Um, can't go in there yet. That's the key that we're going to get from fighting the boss here in just a second. But that leads to an area called the Depths, which I'm not going to be doing right away, but I will come back and do it because it, th that area has my favorite boss in the entire game. So I definitely want to fight that for you guys, but we're not going to go there for a little while. I have some uh, equipment that uh, I want to acquire first. This um, vendor right here, this NPC, will sell you some really important items. So it, take note of where she is, he or she is. I think it's a girl. I think it's a woman. Undead in either case. But she sells some really important stuff. Most importantly, this blooming purple moss uh, clump, the third one here, which reduces your toxin. Um, toxin is one of the worst status ailments, the most annoying status ailments in the game. I might show you a little later what that's all about, but you want to get some of those if you can now. And you also want to get some purging stones. Not for the immediate future, because we still need to go back and buy the seal of Artorius, and that's 20,000 souls, but keep in mind where she's at, because we need to come back here eventually, get blooming purple moss clumps, and some of those purging stones to cure the, cur the curse status and the toxin status. Okay, so we open this gate, and now we have another shortcut from Firelink Shrine back to Lower Undeadburg. So you should be able to recognize this rat and the uh, surrounding area. Now we have a much quicker way of getting back to Firelink Shrine. Now, back at Firelink Shrine, this is where Griggs likes to hang out. I'll show you some of the stuff that he sells. At least we both made it back unscathed. Incidentally, would you care to learn any sorceries? You're clearly talented, and besides, I owe you. Of course, we will require some materials, but I am happy to teach you some elementary spells. Are you interested? So say yes to this. Splendid. Very well. I am pleased to have a chance to give something back. Well then, let's get started straight away. Okay. So, he sells you all kinds of awesome spells, uh, most notably the uh, Great Heavy Soul Arrow. So, if you're going for, uh, and Magic Shield is not bad either, but uh, Great Heavy Soul Arrow is, is a great spell. So, if you're going for a magic build, you might consider buying some of these spells from him, Goodbye. maybe some of the rings. Um, but, not really because uh, the ring that I currently have, Havel's ring, is way more important than those either of those would be. But now let's uh, head back into this fog wall and fight this boss. Now here's a couple of things about this boss that make it tough. He's not an especially hard boss, but the arena you're fighting in is really small, and there are two of those freaking annoying dogs that can poison you. So the first thing you have to do is kill those things as quickly as you can. The way I suggest is to back up these stairs and throw a fireball at them. Um, got one of them there, not the other. But you gotta get rid of them as quickly as you can so you can just focus on, on the boss. Um, and once you do that, the boss actually isn't, isn't too bad. He, he has some pretty predictable patterns. So this move he uses the most often. He kind of swings the blade from his right and then his left hand like that. Then you have a chance to get a hit or two on him. He'll usually repeat. That's like the, the attack he does most often is the one, two. Um, Sometimes he'll do three, and sometimes he'll kind of get both swords together and do kind of just like a straight downward kind of stab at you. Like that. That one's pretty powerful, so just watch out for that. Remember what I've taught you about stamina and how to keep it up. Keep your shield down unless you absolutely have to block so that your stamina will rebuild quickly. And as long as you do that, you should be able to block all of his attacks without much issue. Um, I know that my endurance is at level 40 right now, yours might not be that high, but it's okay. I, I have more stamina than I even need for this battle. Um, as you can see, my stamina is never really getting close to, you know, going all the way down. So you should be able to do this even if your stamina is only at level between 30 and 35. You should be totally fine, no problems at all. You should be able to block all of his attacks with ease, as long as you back up from him and put your shield down and let it build back up again. Just kind of watch his patterns and stay patient, and, and you should be fine. Um, 
that's kind of the key to all the boss battles in this game. None of them are sprints. They're all marathons. You just gotta really take your time and be okay with just getting one hit on the boss and then backing up and letting your stamina rebuild again. And then go back in and get your one hit and then back up. You know, sometimes when you know you can get two hits in and finish him, you know, it's a good idea to do that. But for defeating him, we get the key to the depths. So we'll be using that, but not right now. We'll be using that in the future. Anyways, um, I think that's where I'm going to stop for today. Uh, next time, we're going to be heading to Blight Town, I think. If not Blight Town, maybe we'll go... No, no, we're not going to Blight Town next time. We're going to go to uh, Darkroot Garden, I think. And we're going to get the Seal of Artorias, so make sure you get 20,000 souls so that you can uh, buy that from from Andre Vistora. Anyways, well, you can open this door now, and this leads down to the depths. Uh, but again, we're not going there for now, so thanks for watching. And let me know if you have any questions. Peace!